Not yet, Pip, not yet. Ready to go. Oh, -ho! and Fanny has returned. And Fanny should also return to the office. And... Do that, and then date time! Fanny should have bought date five. The final date. Boss Mistral Bottom has arrived. She seems to be carrying some sort of large leather satchel. Should we be worried? Ah, it's probably just a dead rabbit or something. I see! Very good, boss! Fanny bursts in, big sack in tow, and beams at you. Hello, boss. Good to meet you again. Hey, cutie. Aw, oh, I'm blushing. But I'm not here to get complimented by you. I'm here to take you out on a date. See, we've spent a lot of time together here on your estate and at fancy parties and restaurants. But that's not where I'm most comfortable. I'm most comfortable ah. in the woods! <laughs> you mean, like, outside? <laughs> yeah, outside! Don't you get antsy with the roof over your head all the time? Not at all. Roofs protect me from my hated enemies, the birds! <laughs> anyway, I just think... Can't it would be super fun if you went camping with me in the woods. It would. It, I was told city folk uh, call basic survival camping. <laughs> call basic survival camping. I mean, she's not wrong. Technically. It'd be fun, rough, raw, and private. I like the sexy implications going on here. Good. Let's not waste any time then. Fanny takes you by the hand and leads you to her heavily reinforced carriage. After a long ride, during which Fanny happily tells you about all the kinds of animal droppings she can identify, you arrive at the edge of the woods. She leads you along barely visible paths, hacking at vines of the machete until you reach a secluded clearing by a babbling brook. This should do quite nicely. Fanny pulls a canvas tent out of her sack and begins expert, uh, begins expertly to pitch it. Uh, don't bother the tent. I like to sleep under the stars. Yes, because I want to sound like a cheesy romantic. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. Finally, Abby stows the tent back in her bag. She whistles while she works. A bluebird lands on her shoulder and begins to sing along with her. Well, of course it does. She's clearly meant to be a bit of a dizzy princess, so of course it does. She grabs it and expertly snaps her neck! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, that, <laughs> that would have been an awesome thing to see in Shrek instead they blew up. Well, it's not enough for dinner, but it's a start. Birds are always landing on me when I start singing. Maybe it has to do with being a princess. <laughs> Whatever the reason, I'm not one to turn down free bird meat. Speaking of which, we should have a fire. One sec. I disappears into the trees a few, uh, for a few minutes and returns with an armload of wood. Soon she's got a merry fire going. Ah, this is the life. Do you sit down and enjoy the fire? Fanny moves as if uh, to put her hands around your shoulders, but stops. Hey, uh, I'm realising that we should probably clarify something. I sort of assumed we were going to fuck tonight, but since we never actually talked about it... Is that something you'd be into? Consent, everyone! Consent! Uh... Yes. Good. I've been wanting to rip your clothes off ever since I ever since I met you, but I didn't know whether that was bad manners in the city. Mm, yeah, it kind of is. It, it's a, uh, it's generally frowned upon. Yes. Yet another reason why cities are bullshit. Then he grabs your collar in both hands and rips your clothes completely in half. She stands back admiring your body. 
Damn, boss, you've got a body like a fresh venison steak, thick and juicy. <laughs> that's a that's a line I've not used before. <laughs> oh, maybe I should use that with Charlie. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I don't want you to be naked all by yourself. Fanny flexes and her clothes burst off her. She is as naked as the moon. So, where shall we fuck? The whole world is our bedroom. The highest mountain top, the limbs of a majestic oak. A deep, deep cave? Hmm. The limbs of a majestic oak. I know just the place. Then he picks you up, tucks you under her arm, and sprints off into the night. <laughs> God, the imagery I've just got in my head there. In the woods, you find an ancient oak tree with thick climbable branches. I tosses you up into the tree's furthest branches and follows up nimbly. You notice that she's tied a vein around her ankle and secured it to the tree trunk. For safety, I tend to fall out of the tree when I come. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? You look a little distant. You okay? <laughs> My butler feels that I'm mean, you should fight him. Uh, I feel like we're act selecting two supplies for the occasion. She notices that her pinkies are still up and bashfully puts them down. Yes, I see what you mean. It can be hard to undo the damage that these etiquette lessons have done to us. Well, I bought these wolf pelts for us to lie on, but we could wear them instead if you would if it'll make you more comfortable. Yes, perfect. I am, after all, hungry like the wolf. And other fun songs from the 80s. I'm hungrier. You drape yourselves in Fanny's wolf pelts and feel a savage lust course through you. You feel better now? Are your worries assaged? Or like as <laughs> assuaged, am I right? How do you feel better? Thanks for checking in. Hey, if you're not having fun, I'm not having fun. Again, the key consent there. Now, let's really get after it. Fanny takes your head in both hands and kisses you hungrily. Her strong arms draw your naked body to hers. God damn, boy, this is so hard I want to kill a majestic stag just so I can roast this meat on your ass. <laughs> That's an interesting foreplay. You got me so horny, I practically am a majestic stag. And you're so hot we could start a fire by practically rubbing our thighs together. You always know what to say, don't you, boss? But let's put the tongue to belly use, shall we? And he braces himself against a tree trunk and presses your head down between your legs. Yeah, wait till he's just expecting it and then sweep her feet. Go down and use without resistance, but just as fine as a guard down, you wrap one up around her leg and grab by the west. Oh, what are you doing? Catch her off balance, lifting her off her feet and laying her firmly on the ground. She gasps with delight and wiggles in your embrace. You sneaky snake, you have me just where you want me. Now take me, you animal. Fuck me with anything you got. Your bodies merge and you can no longer tell whose mouth is whose, whose hands are where, where the tree ends and where the two of you begin. Entwine, crest, bite, stroke, cuddle, uh, struggle, and sigh as one beast putting on a show to make the other forest creatures howl with jealousy. Your embrace grows more passionate, more frenzied, until you climax together with one ecstatic howl. Ah. I'm not going to voice the rest of that. Afterwards, you lie panting together the night air, carrying the, sweet, the sweat off your still heaving bodies as wisps of steam. Oh, if I notice a wildness in her eyes, it's as if she was transported to another world by your shared passion. I am a bird, a bird, a leaf on the wind. The wind carries me. I will never return to the earth. She may need your help coming back. <laughs> Hold her in your arms and whisper sweet stories in her ear. Oh, in your arms, pulling her back to earth with the weight of your loving body. 
In her ear he whispers stories of birds and leaves, and a stone cutter who once wished with all his might to be the wind. The words mean nothing, but they are a lifeline to a world of reason which Fanny follows. Hand over hand, back to you. Thank you, boss. I was quite lost there for a moment. You blasted me clean out of my own head. Wow, talk about um, fucking someone's brains out. <laughs> and I liked it a lot. You're cute, kind, sexy, patient, loving, adventurous, and a demon in a sack. Is there anything you aren't? <laughs> Poor. <laughs> um, I'm not good at math. <laughs> yes, well, you're clever to be sure. I think I'm getting to like you quite a lot, boss. You make this whole city living thing kind of worth it. I guess I was up to you and fall sound asleep. Two of you pass the each other's arms, the trees sheltering you, until the sun rises over the treetops and casts a golden light upon you. Oh, Straps, ooh. Stuff is hidden by preference, obviously. <laughs> 